Well, good morning. good morning. I'm Glenn, and I'm one of the pastors here at St. Joe, and I want to welcome you here today to be for the fort together. We, that is why we gather, because we have seen the goodness and the grace of God in Jesus Christ, and that compels us, it leads us, to be for others and for our community. So I'm thankful you're here, and I want to welcome you 
today. Uh, I got a few things I want to make sure you're aware of this morning. One of the first is a thank you for your faithfulness in giving in your tithe and in your offerings. Uh, it just continues to be an incredible thing to me that in the year 2023 we have people whose hearts are so struck by what God has done for them and in their lives that they continue to give in that way of thanksgiving and in worship and to support the ministry of the church. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for faithfulness. Thank you for sticking with it in your worship of God. And one thing I want to lift to you today is if you've been giving uh, online and electronically, you've probably been giving through something called push pay. You may not have known that, but that was the system that was being used. And we need to transition you to a different online format, which is called Stripe. Uh, whether you understand everything I said or not is fine. I don't understand everything I just said. Hopefully that trend improves as we move through the service. <laughs> What does matter is if you've been online giving and you haven't made a shift from one unit of giving to the other, you can go on the church website under the giving tab and you can see it there. It's all spelled out what you need to do. And if that isn't clear and you would like a guide, Jenny in the church office is happy to help with that if you call any day, Monday through Thursday. She'll be happy to walk you through. She's very patient. I've learned that. All. I've tested it and learned already how patient Jenny is. So. Uh, Give her a call and she'll help do that. If you don't, uh, your giving may not function in the weeks ahead. And we don't want that to be the case for your own heart and soul and the way you want to give thanks to God. And certainly the ministry of the church benefits from everything you give. So let's make sure we get that adjusted. Uh, if you're here today as a visitor or a guest, I hope that you'll find a communicator card or connection card. They're out there floating around in different places. And I hope you'll fill that out so we can follow up with you and let you know how glad we are that you're here. Another thing, if you're here today, no matter who you are or how long you've been connected with St. Joe, what we hope you'll do is we hope you'll stick around for cookies after the service. Why? This is not just to give you a boost of sugar before lunch and cause you to have to check your insulin before you go to lunch. No, the real reason is because, folks, we are working on the project of being church. It can happen in our time when we get tested and blown by the winds of disagreement and polarity and pandemic that we can forget what it means to love each other, to be church, to be together. So the cookies are about being church together. And the same thing is true of the cottage gatherings. There's a sign up sheet out by the B door, out by the offices, and I hope you'll sign up there for an opportunity to get to know me better, get to know one another better. And we've got a couple folks uh, both Marilyn and Ruth have been kind enough to open their homes uh, for home gatherings, but there's also a couple gatherings here at the church. What's the purpose? Again, the purpose is we get to know each other, that we get to be church. And that's something we need to work on. Uh, how do we be the church? How do we be for the fort? I'm glad you asked, Beth. I have one more opportunity for you this morning. Uh, a couple of weeks ago for my first sermon, I made note of the reality that Allen County leads the way in the deaths of children to abuse and neglect in the state of Indiana. And a couple weeks after that, or maybe a week after that, Linda Menchie called me and says, Pastor, I heard the sermon, I was paying attention, and I see an opportunity for us to be for the fort. There's an organization called SCAN, Stop Child Abuse Network, that operates here in Fort Wayne. And on March 7th and 8th, they'll need help with prepacking lunches that they sell as a fundraiser and then March 8th, filling orders. Uh, there's specific times associated with that. If you didn't see that in the email under the Read Road tab, when you click Read Road, uh, then where you will find more information is either by calling the church office, or if you got Linda's number, you can call and talk to Linda or text Linda. And I know she's quick on the text response. So uh, you can call or text her, and she's going to help coordinating, because folks, we're going to be church. Amen? Amen. We're going to be for each other, all for Jesus, so that we can be for the fort. That's the goal, and man, is it exciting for us to begin to work on those things. Welcome this morning. I am so glad that you are here.
Yes, amen. Let's celebrate. Please stand as we join in the call to worship this morning. The God of all creation makes us one in the flesh. Let us join hearts and voices in praise. In Jesus Christ, we are made one in the spirit. Let us be united in truth through the same one spirit. We practice our faith in many different ways, yet we confess one Lord Jesus Christ. We render different forms of ministry, yet our calling is one because Christ is undivided. Rejoice, people of God. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Let us continue to worship together by singing our opening hymn, number 398, Jesus Calls Us. Please remain standing and join me as we affirm our faith through the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
You may be seated. We want to celebrate the great ministry that happens every week in this place. Did you know that this week, young folks met for youth group? What a nice group they had, led by our youth volunteer, Sarah Daniels. We're thankful for the work she does as we prepare for a new chapter of ministry. But that kind of stuff happens because of your thanksgivings to God in the time that we worship God with tithe and offering. With that in our mind and heart, I want to invite our ushers to come forward and receive God's tithes and offerings today. <laughs> God, we bring our tithes and offerings to you this day because we are thankful, because you've blessed us, because you've given us more than we deserve, more than we could need. We give these to you today as well to empower the mission of this church, believing that you, God, are not done with St. Joe Church yet, and we are thankful for that. We pray that you would visit us by the power of your spirit today, but send your spirit as well to rest upon Ed and Mary Graham. Send it to rest on Dan and Judy Ricker. Send your spirit to be with the Wilson family, and the families of Lincoln Village on the north side of Fort Wayne, struck this week by violence in their home. Be with this week and send your spirit to my family. As children start new schools and get to know new faces, be this week by the power of your spirit with St. Joe of Life. Bless Pastor Gabrielle and Barbara. Lead them and whisper to them as they experience this transition and discern what will come next. 
be with the folks of St. Joe at the Y, that their mission may continue. They strong in you. They hold fast to the leadership they've received thus far, connecting people to you, God. What the church has never done before. Oh God, lead us all and use these tithes and offerings for the building of your kingdom. Use us and all that we are. May we ever be a part of that kingdom and may it know no end. It is in Jesus' name we pray, even as we pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Please remain standing for the reading of the gospel this morning. Our scripture reading today is from Matthew 4, verses 12 through 23. Jesus begins to preach. When Jesus heard that John had been put in prison, he returned to Galilee. Leaving Nazareth, he went and lived in Capernaum, which was by the lake in the area of Zebulun and Naphtali, to fulfill what was said through the prophet Isaiah land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea along the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light was dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. The calling of the first disciples, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father, Zebedee, preparing their nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father, and they followed him. Jesus heals the sick. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we can all say to that, thanks, thanks be to God. God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Lois. You may be seated. Let's pray. Oh God, we looked out this morning and we saw the snow had fallen. And we were struck with the thought, the words of the psalmist, which reminded us that though our sins are as scarlet, that we will be washed and cleansed by what God does in Jesus Christ, we find ourselves pure, whiter than snow. And we are struck because we know what we are, and we have seen the beauty of the new fallen snow. And in our hearts, we say, thank you, God, won't you remove every barrier to us, to hearing your word? Won't we know today that we are accepted in your sight Oh, God, visit us through this special music and through the word that is proclaimed. Amen.
What's the distance? Now, if, if my mic cuts out, is it cutting in and out a little bit this morning? Yes. Can you hear me okay? I thought maybe it was cutting a little bit. What's the distance between being caught and starting to catch? Yeah, Robin just gave me a, I don't understand the question, what are you talking about, Glenn Wood? Let me explain the question. The distance between being caught and starting to catch. It is true that a good number of us in this room this morning, those joining online, and we're thankful for them out there, have been caught. We've been caught by the grace, the truth, the beauty, who is the person of Jesus Christ who brings God near to us. We have been caught. Now, some of you are thinking, I don't know, Glenn, it sounds to me, caught sounds like I was caught with my hand in a cookie jar somewhere at some point. And some of you are sitting out there and say, well, maybe I was caught <laughs> like that. Maybe I was. Maybe there was a moment in my life when I woke up and I looked at the world around me and I looked at what I had done and I thought, this isn't working. I can't do this anymore. Look at the mess I've made of things. You were caught. But in that moment, he met you. And there was grace, and there was truth, and there was beauty. Some of you are saying, oh, no, that's not my experience at all. But maybe, maybe you were looking, maybe you were looking for something more. Maybe you were searching, and maybe on a day as beautiful as today, with the snow fallen fresh and new and the birds alighting in it, sending up just that little puff of snow as they land and the sun coming up over all of it, maybe then you looked up and you were caught. Oh, Lord, I know that you are real. I know that you are here and with me. Maybe you were caught in a moment like that. There's a theologian, a Bible scholar by the name of Scott McKnight who suggests to us that people change when they are in a quest or in a crisis, when they are on a quest or in a crisis. And in one way or another, that often describes the place where we are caught by God and Jesus Christ. Either we were in a crisis and we were found, or we were looking for something. We were looking for something and found ourselves caught by him who called our name. Does that resonate with anybody this morning? Yes. Amen. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Oh, DeAndre, man, am I glad you're here. These folks need some leadership this morning. I know there's snow out there, but... Have you been caught by this one from Galilee? Has he called your name? Were you captivated by his truth and beauty in quite crisis or in quest? Once that happens, then the question is, how far is the distance between that moment and when we turn around and start to catch others? Up in the ebb and flow and the movements of God's divine mercy made present in Jesus Christ. How long do we go? It seems and can feel like a very far distance before we think we'll be ready. But the question is, how far is the distance between when we are caught and we begin to catch? The gospel deals with this question quite directly. As Jesus walked alongside the Galilee Sea, he saw two brothers. In fact, I want to start before that in the text. I want to start earlier in the text than that in Matthew's Gospel. Our reading today actually started in verse 18. In verse 18, or verse 12, when Jesus saw that John was arrested. Before Jesus even catches Simon Peter and Andrew, he actually is in a crisis himself. In verse 12, it starts, Now John heard that, Jesus heard that John was arrested. He went to Galilee. Last week, does anybody remember last week? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Remember what you ate for supper last night? Yes. 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 
Anybody remember what we talked about last week? We talked about John the Baptist, and we talked about he saw Jesus coming, and he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and then the disciples followed. It makes sense because of that. In this text, in Matthew, Matthew's gospel tells the story in a little different way. John's gospel's written much later, and as we talked about last week, John's concerns in the gospel of John are more philosophical and are more theological. But Matthew, written earlier, is more concerned with just the facts, ma'am, the chronological order of events. And so when this text in Matthew begins in verse 12, when it begins with telling us that John has been arrested and then Jesus leaves, we see, first of all, Jesus in crisis. And what is crisis? But remember what Scott McKnight told us, it's an opportunity for transformation. Jesus heard that John was arrested and he went to Nazareth and he settled in Capernaum. He was back to his hometown. Notice here the chronology is a little different. It's not right at the time of John's ministry, but it's after John's ministry. He goes back up there and from that time Jesus began to announce, change your hearts and lives. Here comes the kingdom of heaven. So what we have is Jesus in crisis. Oh, we think of him not being at all like us, but the epistle to the Hebrews tells us he knows our condition, he's familiar with our weakness, and here we see it. His cousin has been arrested. The disciples and followers of John are scattering, and Matthew tells us Jesus heads back up to his home country, back to that place in the midst of crisis, and he calls people to change. He starts to catch even as he's caught. And by verse 18, then we pick up with what's on the screen. Verse 18, as Jesus walked alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who's called Peter, and Andrew, throwing fishing nets into the sea because they were fishermen. Seems obvious, but worth stating. Come follow me, he said, and I'll show you how to fish for people. If you grew up like I did going to a Sunday school where we memorized the King James Version, You'll probably remember that, I will make you fishers of men. Yeah, but the reality is that the word in Greek is anthropos, and it means people. <laughs> so Jesus says, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of people. And right away, they left their nets and followed him. And continuing on, he saw another set of brothers. Now, you know what's happening here? Did you see it? He's caught. Jesus himself is in crisis, but he starts fishing, he starts catching, and he's calling them to catch as well. James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, and they were in a boat with Zebedee, their father, repairing their nets. Jesus called to them, and immediately they left the boat and their father, and they followed him. And what is the distance, we wonder, between being caught in crisis or being caught on a quest and the distance between that and our starting to catch, well, Jesus actually implied it right there. He said, uh, follow me and I will make you fishers of people, comma, and I will make you. So the distance seems to be at first, comma, and, but Jesus didn't use commas, we don't think. <laughs> so it's just and. So the distance Jesus suggests between being caught and beginning to catch is the word and, or more accurately rendered mathematically as there's no distance. And then he shows us right here what the distance is between being caught, these disciples, and catching. They themselves now caught. They themselves probably on a quest. Oh, can't you imagine? Peter and Andrew fishing day by day. They must have been looking for some meaning. They must have been searching for something more, don't you think? Can't you imagine, Ed? Can't you imagine? Peter and Andrew rinsing out the nets after a long day. And Peter saying, Andy, I don't know. There's got to be something more than fish in the world. Wouldn't it? I, I know this has worked for our, for our dad and our granddad and our great granddad. And for a thousand years, our people have fished here. But, but don't you think there might be something more? Wouldn't it be exciting to be out and be in the story, a story bigger than us? I mean, if they were on a quest, that's the only thing that helps me make sense of why when he calls, they just drop it and go. They were already looking, already searching for something. So he calls and they go, and then they all start catching again. The distance between being caught and catching is 
Zero. 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 Nada. Zilch. Nothing. There's no distance. Immediately it starts. Jesus travels through Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and he announces the good news of the kingdom. And he heals every disease and sickness among the people. And healed every disease and sickness, he travels through Galilee, teaching in their synagogues. He announces the good news of the kingdom. And he heals diseases and sickness from among all the people. And news about him spread throughout Syria, and people brought it to him. All those who had various kinds of diseases, those in pain, those possessed by demons, those with epilepsy, and those who were paralyzed. And he healed them. I don't know, Beth, it sounds like people are getting caught, doesn't it? The distance from being caught to Peter, James, John, Andrew, Jesus, catching is zero. Large crowds followed him from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and from areas beyond the Jordan River. There's a church growth model out there. Maybe you've heard about it. Pastor, we just need to get some young families. Have you heard this? Yeah, you've heard people talk like that. Uh, and there's a lot of churches in America and even in Fort Wayne, that the model is what we need, what we need are, uh, what we need are straight, white, young families with guinea pigs. That's what we need. <laughs> now, I got good news for you. If I suck my stomach in, I can identify that way. But do you see that in the gospel reading, that is not exact, exactly the model that the kingdom of God catches people on, is it? Who comes when Jesus starts to catch? Those with sicknesses, those possessed by demons. Did you hear it? Those who with infirmity, those who are old, those who are young. Everybody, everybody. But let me tell you, there's a couple groups in particular. Can I come over here for a second? <laughs> People in crises are who's coming to Jesus. The other one? Anybody remember yet? Chuck's got it but you've heard the sermon the second time. <laughs> <laughs> on a quest. The people coming are the people who are in a crisis or who are on a quest and they are caught. And what is the distance then from when they start Zero. to catch? Zero. 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 Oh, he's preaching to the choir this morning. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, he's preaching to the choir. <laughs> There was a young woman, there was a young woman who, uh, her life was a mess. Her marriage was unraveling, and uh, she was getting to kind of a desperate place, and it, it was in an era when she at least expected that her marriage would last forever. That's the way her mom and dads had been, that's the way her grandparents had been, that's what she thought would happen. For her. It was in an era that America was shooting rockets and human beings at the moon in hopes of landing one, and that the bouffant dews were climbing higher and higher, but it was an era in which she was falling lower and lower and lower until one day, a woman who she knew only just a little bit stopped to sell makeup. And the woman, the young woman, she started to share what was going on in her life she started to share, and what a feat it must have been for this woman's never been particularly a font of revelation about what was going on in her own mind, in her own reality, but she in that day must have been low, for she started to tell this woman she only knew just a little what a crisis she was in. What will happen with the things we built? What will happen if my marriage is over? What will happen with my six-year-old daughter? And the woman selling makeup was not prepared for this. But she said, hey, you know, around the corner from where we live out in the country, there's that, that little white church, that little white Baptist church. You know where that's at? And she said, yeah, I know. I'll meet you there Sunday. If you'll meet me there Sunday. And so the young woman with the little girl said she would. And they arrived on Sunday morning. And there was this little white Baptist church out in the country. And rural Indiana. And they went in and they sat in the pews. And as they went in, they realized that the lady who was selling makeup had kept her promise. She was there standing by the steps and walked up in with them and sat down next to them. 
And the service unfolded just like it would. Just like it would here, except for that whole church probably fit in the area that was this stage. And the stained glass was far less and the ceiling far lower, but they sang their hymns and the preacher gave God's word. And then there was a call, if you hear the sound of his voice this morning, come to the altar. And so the young woman, who only days earlier had shared her trouble with the lady selling makeup, got up and she rose. And my grandma went to the altar because she heard him call her name. The same one who had said, Andrew and Simon, but I'll call you Peter. He heard her say, heard him say, Jean. And she went. And when she threw her prayers and probably tears, looked over to her right, she looked to her right and she saw my mom. Her six-year-old daughter had come up with her because she had heard him call her name as well. And when my grandma looked to the left, she saw Dar, the lady who has been to her house to sell makeup, and it turned out had not been to this church all that much, if ever, before. In fact, it turned out Dar did not at that time, until that moment, even really have what she would have called a relationship with Jesus Christ. But she had been with my grandma as she shared what was going on in her life, and she said, I don't know what to do, but it sounds like we need Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody said. Yes. And so she'd invited, she'd invited them to church, a church she didn't go to. <laughs> but he met them there. And they were caught. And Dar really raises an interesting point, doesn't she? Because her, the distance for Dar between being caught and catching, zero. Now, none of this means that life was perfect after that. None of this means that everybody in the story has it all together. You can ask the therapist for my family about that. You can ask mom and grandma about that. Hi, mom and grandma, leave your comments on the thread. <laughs> but what it does mean, they're on the live stream, John, at some point. If not live, then later, they'll watch it. Believe me, Sherry, they'll watch it. <laughs> but what it does mean is that we reveal the distance between our being caught and our starting to catch, no matter if we got it together or not. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says, if we're crazy, it's for God's sake. If we're rational, it's for your sake. Listen to this. The love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this. One died for the sake of all. Therefore, all have died. He died for the sake of all, so that those who are alive should not live for themselves, but for the one who died for them and was raised. So then from this point, we won't recognize people by human standards, even though we used to know Christ by human standards. That isn't how we'll know him now. So then, if anyone is in Christ, that person is part of a new creation. In other words, they're ready to get to catching, aren't they? What came before doesn't matter. Now, the old things have gone, they're gone away, and look, new things have arrived, and all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. And here's the kicker, who gave us a ministry of reconciliation, bringing people together, catching people in crisis and on their quests. In other words, God was reconciling the world to himself through Christ by not counting people's sins against them. And he has trusted us with this job, that not only are we caught, but we're called to catch. Maybe you've noticed, maybe not, but this church this church has been and continues to be somewhat in a little state of crisis. I have good news for you. Do you remember what Scott McKnight said at the beginning? Crisis and quest is the opportunity for transformation. 
It's where we're caught when we find ourselves in crisis. Maybe you come here this morning and you think, oh man, if only he knew as he's talking about crisis what a mess my life is. I have good news for you. Man, have I got a church for you. <laughs> oh, now, come on now. There, there we go. Thanks, Darren. Yes, amen. And it's okay. You know why it's okay? Because that's where he calls us. That's where he catches us. Right there. Maybe you come here today and you say, I've been looking. I've been looking, Pastor. I've been looking for meaning in my life. I've been looking for the what's next, the what's more. I've been scanning the horizon like those fishermen did so long ago, wondering, what do you want from me, God? And guess what? St. Joe, we are in that moment too, aren't we? What's next? Who will we be? What will we be? Okay. Maybe you come here as an individual this morning. And you're having those same questions. Man, do I have a church for you? Because we are on this journey together. And I believe in those moments in crisis or quest, that is where we are caught. Is there an amen for that? Amen. Oh, come on now. Amen. And the choir is with me. Where are you all? Come on. Amen. There we go. And the distance from that moment of our crisis and our quest to when we turn and start to catch is... Zero. Zero. There's no distance. So get to it in your time and how you serve. Get to it in how you give and in your tithe. Pastor, I don't have time and I can't give. You say, that's okay. You have a voice. Use it. Share your story. Give a witness. That's what we need are people who are compelled, who have been caught by the truth, the beauty of Jesus Christ and who then turn to catch. That is what we must be and do if we are going to be for the fort, for each other, and all for Jesus and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Now it just might be, it just might be that something really unusual could happen here this morning. It just might be that he who walked along the sea and called to Peter and Andrew and James and John, coming right off his own crisis with the arrest of his cousin, it just might be that he who called their name and he who called the names in a little Baptist church in rural Indiana might visit here today and call our name. If he comes, talk to him. If he comes, tell him where you'll go. If he comes, tell him you're ready to catch. And if he comes, oh, Beth, this is a dangerous moment. <laughs> and you feel led, you're welcome to come up here to talk to him this morning. Let's stand today as we sing our closing hymn. Lord, you have come to the lake shore.
Thank you. You may be seated. May you go today in the peace and power to be caught by the rhythms of God's grace and truth and beauty in Jesus Christ and to begin to catch St. Joe United Methodist Church right away. Amen. 